Hi, I'm uh, Art Bergeron, and welcome to this month's seminar. If you haven't seen one of these before, uh, I'm an attorney. I do elder law at Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law. Um, and the point of these seminars, um, like the seminars that I have traditionally done uh, at the senior center of the library in your community, but I'm not doing now because of uh, COVID-19, um, is to really try to inform you about a whole range of issues that may be of concern to you if you're like my friends Frank and Mary um, and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Because Frank and Mary, they've been living in their hometown for their whole lives and they want to stay right where they are and they want to be happy. But right now, uh, and that's the point of this month's seminar, right now they're doing what they have to be doing in October, November, and early December, and that is figuring out which Medicare plan is best for them. And the reason for that is that as opposed to most folks um, whose insurance um, it can, you know, varies all over the place, all of the Medicare plans that are come up for renewal uh, every, um, every fall between October and December, and they're up for renewal right now. So the question is, which plan is better for you? Uh, and Frank and Mary's goal in life is very simple. They just want to live in their house until they die. And in the meantime, they want to sleep well and probably nothing stresses them out more than thinking about some of these issues. Because, so once again, just to introduce you, Frank and Mary, their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., um, back when they were younger, back when they were both 40, their kids were little, and they had some worries that kept them up at night, um, like the worries that you had um, and that your kids now have. You know, could I get into a car accident? Will my house burn down? Will one of the kids get hurt? Well, one of us dies suddenly. Now these are all, they're small bubbles in their world because it's not likely that any of them will happen, but they worry about them or they worried about them. And as a result, um, the, in order to help them sleep better, they got insurance because they were trying to make sure that in the unlikely case that one of those things happened, they'd be insured against it. So as they get older, um, many of those bubbles kind of shrunk down in importance uh, compared to the really big one of will they get sick. There's certainly a worry about will they, will they die tomorrow, but the point is when you, when you get old, you're not as concerned about insuring against your dying tomorrow because the point of the life insurance when you were younger was to take care of Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. or to take care of Mary if Frank just dropped dead. And now those issues have kind of gone away because their assets are better and they're kind of more settled. Um, will the house burn down? Well, that's, that's a constant. You know, you always want to take care of that, but it remains kind of unlikely. Um, yeah, well, maybe you got, you're slightly more likely to get into a car accident as you get older, although that's actually not true. Uh, until you're quite a bit older, in your 80s, your likelihood of getting into a car accident is lower when you're 70 than it was when you were 20. The big one, though, is am I going to get sick? Um, and, and that worry looms over seniors more and more the older that they get. I often have seniors told me, I'm not afraid to die, I'm afraid of being frail. And when they say they're afraid of being frail, they're afraid of that, what that entails. They're certainly afraid of, afraid of the pain and the nausea and all of that. But they're also really afraid that they might go broke from, being, from getting frail. But fortunately, uh, today there's an answer to what happens if I really get sick. Uh, even though, you know, th getting sick causes all these different problems. There's the ambulance, there's the hospital, the doctors, the drugs. A lot of it's the drugs now. Uh, the, the, the physical and other kinds of therapists that they might need to hire. There are all those questions. The answer is very simple and it's Medicare. Um, so, I guess it's so easy for us today to forget that Medicare wasn't always there. And so it's important before we start talking about Medicare to talk about the point of Medicare. Medicare was there to solve a problem. That was the problem. In 1960, about 33% of all senior households lived in poverty. Today, about 6% of senior households live in poverty. What happened? By 1960, Social Security had already, was already, had already been there for like 30 years. There, there were a lot of other programs for seniors, but if you got old and you got sick, you couldn't get insured. 
there were no, not, there was, insurance companies would just drop you because you were just, you just became uninsurable because the risk was too high. That was the point of Medicare, was to help folks like Frank and Mary deal with those issues for the rest of their life, and it worked. So, to, before we can kind of talk about what their, what Medicare plan Frank and Mary need to consider, um, you really need to kind of focus on how does, how does Medicare really work? Because some folks have a really good knowledge of that. Most folks don't, you know, because you're not really focused on this. It's, it's kind of a distant thing. You have your Medicare card. But I want to talk about that for a little bit. So, Medicare. You always hear of these letters, A, B, C, and D. There's Medicare A. Traditional Medicare was composed of Medicare A and Medicare B. The, the, the anchor to Medicare was really Medicare A, because one of the reasons for Medicare was certainly to save all Frank and Mary, but another reason was to keep the hospitals open, because what was happening as a result of the fact that all the, the, the seniors were uninsured was that folks who got really sick and ended up in the hospital couldn't pay, and that was really stressing the hospitals out also. So the anchor for Medicare, and the one part of Medicare that is totally self-funded. It's totally funded through those withdrawals from your paycheck while you, while you were, when you were younger, um, was the hospital insurance. So Medicare A funds your hospital admission. Um, there is a deductible of a couple thousand dollars, uh, or approximately a couple thousand dollars, and then when you're in the hospital, it will cover you for a given period of time. It'll, it will cover you for infinite numbers of 60-day periods of illness. Uh, although at the end of uh, um, 20 days, there is a, um, a copay, but, but it'll, it'll cover you for those periods of time. Uh, in addition, if you happen to be in the hospital for more than 60 days, it'll cover you for an additional extended period, although not forever. Um, it'll cover your, your stay in a skilled care nursing facility uh, if you were there for less than 100 days. And if you were there because you get discharged from a hospital. It'll cover, there's a special program, and once again, you always want to talk to your doctor or the VNA about this. If you're at home and homebound and need care at home, there's a special Medicare program uh, covered under Medicare A that will cover up to 60 days of your care when you're homebound. Now remember, this program is designed for people, like all of Medicare, is designed for people who need skilled care. Medicare is not going to cover your days at home if you simply need a home health aid, but don't need skilled care like a nurse or a physical therapist. And finally, Medicare A covers hospice. Covers, and is that, that's the benefit. And remember, <clears throat> hospice does not mean, or though it could mean, the few days just before you die. Um, the hospice benefit is available to anyone where their doctor certifies that given their current condition, they may die within the next six months. So Medicare A covers all of those things. Medicare B, um, which is partially paid for through that deductible that you pay, but all, <coughs> excuse me, also paid for through, through uh, ta your tax dollars, um, covers everything else that you can, would normally think of. It covers your, your doctors, it covers day treatments at the hospital, it covers emergency, the, your, your emergency room if you don't get admitted to the hospital. Uh, it covers durable medical equipment. The thing about Medicare B, is that there are copays. Um, you you often get those little those forms in the mail after you've gone through one of these trips to the doctor, and you'll get this long form that comes from Medicare that describes what they paid to the doctor, and it'll start it'll talk about what the doctor was going to was going to charge his ordinary or or, or his fee. It will then talk about what Medicare cons would consider to be the ordinary and reasonable cost of that care in your area. It'll then take 80% of that, and that's what Medicare pays. So Medicare pays 80% of this ordinary and reasonable number. Um, your copay pays the rest. Now, incidentally, there is, you are paying a premium for Medicare, and you're required to pay that premium if you're in Medicare. That premium right now or is $144.60 per month. Uh, it's higher if you're in a very high, high uh, um, uh, income bracket, but we're not going to go through that. So that's Medicare B. <clears throat> now, for most of us, most of you, you, you find yourself looking at those slides saying, but wait a minute, I didn't think there were, were any Medicare, you know, co-pays and supplements and all of these things. 
Well, the reason it, for that is probably because you didn't get those bills because you had a supplement. So one of the things that Congress did back in the 1960s when they created these programs is they also said, okay, so, so these programs, Medicare A and B, are going to be government paid programs, but we're going to encourage the private insurance market to, 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 uh, to allow those folks who don't want to take any risks or who want to take less risks than those things that are built into to Medicare. Because remember, that's all of what this is about. This, is, this whole program is about insurance. It's about figuring out what you're willing to risk, right? Is, the, is we're, gonna, we're gonna, gonna encourage insurance companies to provide Medicare supplemental plans. Now, there are a whole variety of those and they will co cover different things. They will cover, but they may cover co-pays, the Medicare deductible. They may cover extended care. Remember I was talking about the fact that there is a limit under Medicare A to the number of days that Medicare will actually pay for your hospitalization. Well, you can buy, you can buy coverage for more extended care. Now, of course, the more coverage you buy, or the, or the, and this also varies according to the company that you buy it from, there's gonna be a difference in your premiums. So that's, those are the, when you hear of the supplement plans, the Medicare supplement plans, that's what those are about. And then finally, there was this incredible change or expansion of Medicare uh, that happened during the Bush administration, um, wow, almost 20 years ago, in order to respond to what had become, become this increasing albatross uh, um, um, around the necks of seniors, which was the expanded cost of drug care. Because back when Medicare was created uh, in the 60s, people were taking a lot less drugs, just a lot less pills. That has really changed because the pharmaceutical industry has really developed a lot of terrific stuff that helps people stay healthy. But none of that was covered under Medicare until Medicare D came along. So you, as you may be aware, um, Medicare D, there is no automatic Medicare D. Th this isn't part of what well, you paid for you know, while, you're, while, you're, while you were working and stuff. Um, Medicare D, um, it, which is authorized by Congress, is offered by a whole variety of companies. Uh, if I recall correctly, there are, there, are, there are a lot of plans. There are 26 or 27 plans now that are offered uh, around the state by different insurance companies depending on what your worries are. Uh, in Medicare D, you're, you're always paying a premium to somebody, to some insurance company. Um, you, are, you are, depending on what your plan is, and depending on what the drug is, there may be a copay for that drug. There's probably going to be a deductible, some amount that you're gonna have to start off by paying before Medicare D uh, insurance kicks in, and some drugs may not be covered. This is really complicated, right? Um, but it's, an, it's a key part of everything that you're looking at. And then finally, there's Medicare C. Many people here have still not heard of Medicare C or even considered it. Medicare C, which because it's, as you notice, it actually comes between B and D, um, and it, so it was actually developed a long time ago, actually, um, well before the drug plans came in. The concept behind Medicare C was to encourage insurance companies who wanted to get into this market to offer an alternative to the traditional Medicare A and B. And the notion behind Medicare C is that what the plan does is it, it, it replaces your A and B. And now, since D has come along, Medicare C plans actually replace A, B, and D. So nationally, Medicare C is used by about 30%, 33% of seniors. In Massachusetts, it's only used by about 20%. Um, these are all private insurance plans. You decide on the premiums, and it offers. It, it, they are required to offer all of the benefits that Medicare A and B offer. They can offer more than that, and that's totally a function of the company and the plan. So the question is. Oh, and then finally, there are some things that aren't covered by any any of the plans that I just talked about: eye care, hearing, dental, the cost of staying healthy. There's just about nothing in any of the traditional plans, except some of these Medicare C plans, that, that, pay, that helps you to, 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 or pays you to join the health club, to do other things that are gonna keep you healthy. So, the good news, everybody qualifies for all the plans. 
You can change your Medicare D plan and your Medicare Advantage plan every year, right? And if you go to a Medicare C plan, you can always drop it and go back to traditional Medicare. The bad news, you will never figure this out on your own. Now, when I was designing this program, I was talking to one of my assistants who said, you know, you really shouldn't put it that way. That's insulting to people. So, okay, I'm going to put it this way. I could never figure this out on my own. You may be smarter than me, but this is really complicated. So, here's a proposed strategy for how you should deal with all this. I'm not going to tell you the answer to all these questions. You, you're really scratching your head right now just understanding what the questions are, right? But here's a proposed strategy. First, figure out your Medicare D plan. Second, figure out your Medicare supplement coverage, because these are things that are real variables. Third, consider your Medicare C alternatives. Once you've figured out what you're going to be paying, what A and B are going to give you, and what, you're, what, C, and what D is going to cost you, then compare it to C. And then, finally, get somebody to help you figure all this out. Get somebody to figure all this out. So, figuring out Medicare D. That, that you ha start, trust me, the best way to do this is start there. There is a number of people who can help you. There are your local shine counselors in many communities. Uh, there are organizations like the Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences that if you contact them will help you figure out these plans. All for free, by the way, or, or, or those folks are all for free. And then finally, there are some private advisors who will help you figure this stuff out. So I know a terrific one. His name is Peter McKay. He lives on Nantucket. And I talked to him just to help me understand how he talks to people about looking at their Medicare D plans. So, what he, what, as, he, as he talked to me, regarding your, current, your D plan, you have to say to yourself, what drugs are you using, right? And what drugs might you be using in the next year? What's the dosage? How many pills a day? How many pills a week, right? Um, and, and then, look in the mirror. You have to look in the mirror, say to yourself, how am I doing right now? How do I think I'm going to be doing next year? That's the great part about all of these plans is that you can, you, you don't have to, you're not stuck with the fact that you're getting sicker. You're getting older. You may be having some problems. You can readjust. So if you think you're going to do great next year, then what you're going to do in, if you want, to, if you're trying to just sleep well at night is buy the, like the cheaper plan that doesn't provide all the extra coverage or that may not be covering any particularly it, uh, unusual or exotic drugs because that's the cheapest. If on the other hand, if you found out you have cancer or if you've got some other deteriorating problems that mean you're gonna, the bill is going to go up next year, just change your plan for next year. So, how do you, what, you what do you think your health is going to look like? How much risk do you want to take? What does it take, how well, what does it take for you to be able to sleep at night, right? And uh, how much risk can you afford to take? Obviously, this varies. These pr programs vary depending on what your income is and what your assets are. But you know, the go for people of our age, right? I'm 70 myself. For people of our age, the goal of life is to sleep well at night, right? And so if spending a little extra money of your income is helping you sleep so you're not worried about this, that's probably the best dollar that you can spend. So, get some advice. And, and one, once again, Peter McKay talked to me about this. Brand names versus generics. For the package of drugs that you're using, are there things that you can substitute? Even, even, even after you get to that, even if you're using a generic, is there a different kind of drug that can be used to solve the same problem? One of the things Peter McKay told me about is that oftentimes doctors, they're not prescribing based on what your budget is, they're prescribing on, based on what they're used to prescribing. So there may be drugs in a similar category to what they're prescribing, right, that will take care of the, your problem the same way and that are going to be a lot cheaper to you. It's not their job to figure that out. It's your job to figure that out by talking to an advisor. Then pick your pharmacy. Peter McKay, when we, we, we went on to the, uh, the state website together when we were talking about this, and Peter showed me in this one town that we were looking at, there was a Walgreens on one side of the street and a CVS on the other side of the street. And so we took this, this pretend person and in terms of what their dosage was and their, and their medicines were, uh, and we calculated which drugstore they should use. The difference in terms of the premium, right, and the deductible 
was like $1,000, right? Just by walking across the street to the different drugstore. You need to get that part figured out. And finally, you need to talk to, uh, to, talk to some folks about Prescription Advantage. There's simply a great Massachusetts funded program. This is your tax dollars at work to help you pay for a lot of these deductibles, right? Uh, if, if you use Prescription Advantage as opposed to using these other plans. It's a great program. People assume that the, they'll never be able to, to, to qualify for this. The income criteria for this program are extremely high. I can almost guarantee you, if you're making less than $100,000 a year, you could probably benefit from Prescription Advantage. I know you find this hard to believe. Believe me, you can benefit. So after you've figured out the, the Part D part, then you need to try to figure out, you, you need to figure, talk about your, med, your supplemental plan and kind of the rest of your plan. For this, Peter McKay can certainly talk to you about this. For this though, a lot of Shine folks who can also talk to you about your Medicare D can talk to you about all of those plans. These folks are all volunteers. Um, they, they are throughout the Commonwealth. I'm just mentioning Carolyn McLeod because she's in Southboro and I have never heard a person um, th that was so well versed and kept up so well with all of these programs is Carolyn McLeod. She's just a remarkable person. She, you know, she's retired now, worked at Harvard, her, Harvard during her, her career and she's just interested in helping you out, right? But that's what, what they're all doing. They're just interested in helping you out. So your Medicare, your Medicare to figure out what your supplement plan is, right? You need to figure out, um, there are many different providers. Each one has a bunch of different plans. Each plan has, has premiums based on different levels of risk. And I'm just giving you one example, MedX. For many years, when, I, when people talked about I, Medicare supplement plans, I was like, well, what's that? But then they said MedX. I said, oh, I know what that is, right? I think MedX was the first uh, supplemental plan, although now there are a bunch of them. But just, just use this example. MedX Core, um, their, their core benefit, which, costs about, which, which last year cost $105 a month or, or $1,260 a year, covers your Medicare D co-pays. Their super duper benefit, which was their Sapphire benefit, which costs, um, um, I want to say about 80% more, also covers a number of the other things that I talked about. It covers some of those, it covers the hospital deductibles. It gives you that greater coverage, possible coverage at the hospital if you need it. So once again, the question is, how much risk are you willing to take? And then you need to look plan by plan. They're all trying to sell you something, right? This is the free market. You need to figure out what you need to buy. Finally, and this does not apply unfortunately in Nantucket and in Martha's Vineyard, you need to look at your Medicare C alternative. Once you've figured out what your drug cost is going to be, and remember your drug cost includes the cost of the insurance and also the cost of the co-pays and the deductibles that you're paying as a result of that insurance, right? Then your Medicare um, supplement plan involves the cost of the insurance, right? And depending on the plan that you bought, what's left in terms of your deductibles and your co-pays. Now take all of that and then shop for your Medicare C plan and find out. You can go, once again, you want to go plan by plan. You can certainly attempt to do that on your own, but my suggestion would be talk to a Carolyn McLeod or talk to a Peter McKay, help them go through all of this with you. Well, Peter McKay isn't going to help you because he's on Nantucket and he's not going to be familiar with a lot of these other plans because he doesn't need to be doing it all the time. Talk to your local Shine counselor. These plans also vary depending on which hospitals are in your area because many of the Medicare C plans, they're limited uh, in that they'll provide the benefit but only if you're, if you're using their agreed set of doctors or their agreed set of hospitals. So you want to look at what your possible Medicare C plans are, right? Once again, there are lots of companies and lots of plans. Regarding these plans, like with the D plans, you want to make sure that your drugs are on the plan. Probably one of the biggest costs that you, that you pay for making a mistake in all of this is by ending up with a plan that doesn't include the drugs that you're using all the time, right? And then you want to check for the bells and whistles. Each of these plans, each of the Medicare C plans, 
comes with some of these extras, like some of the things that I had mentioned that are normally uninsured. Eye exams, eye glasses, dental, silver sneakers. I have a lot of seniors that refer to the silver sneakers program. That's the program through which the insurance company will pay for your health care benefit, for, your, for your, your membership at a health club. That's a great benefit and it helps you obviously, makes you feel a lot better, saves them a boatload of money, which is the reason why they're doing it. One of the concepts we taught behind Medicare um, C plans was that they were meant to deal with keeping you well as opposed to just paying for the cost of being sick. Now, once you've done all of that work, you've You've looked at your traditional plans. You looked at your Medicare B charge. You've taken your Medicare supplement cost. You've taken your Medicare premium cost. You've estimated all the money you're gonna pay out of pocket as a result of having all of those plans. You took all of that and compared it to what your possible Medicare C plans could be. That's what you have to do. At the end of that, you can truly figure out um, what, is the, what is the best health plan for you? At that point, buy yourself dinner because if you did this right, you've just saved yourself that dinner and a boatload of remaining money. Now, now I guess my final message here is, this is a ton of work. It's a, just a ton of work. That's the reason why most people don't do it, right? It's very complicated and they feel they can get by and you can get by by doing nothing. Right? As long as you stay healthy. As long as you stay healthy, right? Your traditional Medicare A and Medicare B are, are just going to be terrific plans for you, right? In most cases. But th those plans are not specifically designed for you. So if you want something that's more specifically tailored to you, and when you're if you're really trying to end up at the end of the day sleeping well because you know you're going to be covered and you haven't wasted any insurance money, then my recommendation is get yourself an advisor. Remember, my goal and Frank and Mary's goal is always to sleep well at night. I hope that this helps you do so. Thank you very much.